Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force News Burst brought to you by GeneralsJoes.com with me as your host Chris Grundleby McLeod, aka Diagnostic <laughs> 80. Joining me to discuss and break down the brand new Bumblebee trailer is Justin Ice Cream Bell. I'm gonna have to beat that. Um, so without further ado, That's glorious scream probably sounds better, makes more sense. I'm gonna see if I can put that on my badge at work. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get stuck into this news burst. Earlier today, Paramount Pictures dropped the highly anticipated Bumblebee movie trailer to a fairly positive online reaction, for a change. The movie looks to be somewhat of a departure from the previous Transformers live-action films and is set in 1987, prior to the Bayverse. From the clear use of dialogue from the first film at the beginning of the trailer, it would appear that the film is still firmly in that same universe, as there were murmurs of this being a reboot of sorts. Looks like we have a softie on our hands. <laughs> Not the first time I've said that before. Um, what did pique my interest was the albeit blink and you'll miss it appearance of what can only be Starscream in his G1 styling, and transforming no less. Anyway, let's get into this trailer in more detail. First off, Justin, what were your initial thoughts after seeing the trailer today? I, I got to admit, you know, when I saw, I think it was actually the the full force that I saw at Sheridot. Of course, first, of, course. of course. And uh, I was like, oh, oh God, do I do I want to watch this? You know, I, but I, you know, of course, I'm an addict, so I, I went ahead and watched it. And I was expecting nothing because obviously, you know, I really enjoyed the first Transformers film, and Agreed. everyone after that was kind of further and further and further downhill Agreed. and uh, so i don't think i even watched the latest one which was the last night or oh. whatever so I, I really wasn't expecting anything and i was incredibly pleasantly surprised i i really enjoyed what i saw from the trailer it really seemed like they were capturing kind of the energy of i don't it, it wasn't campy by any stretch but it, it really had some character it had some hmm. charm you know, it took this franchise, which has been very much brutalized by Michael Bay, into, you know, these are angry killer robots firing lasers, destroying things, and that's all their life is about, is, you know, wreckage and destruction and death, and injected some really interesting kind of charm and, and wittiness, and not forced wittiness either, but it was, it was, I really liked it. I, yeah. I enjoyed it quite a bit, quite a bit more than I thought I would. I think a lot of that has to be uh, uh, probably down to the fact that Travis Knight is directing mm -hmm. this one. Now, this is yeah. his first live-action movie. He's been known previously for animation, um, yep. for, uh, like, Paranorman and Coraline and, and uh, kind of movies like that. And I think even in, yeah, and more recently, uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. So he's got mm -hmm. this, you know, he, he's kind of got like a bit of stop motion animation in there. He's got, you know, all, all sorts of kind of stuff going on in his previous work. Yeah. Now, I believe that obviously there's a lot of, you know, the, I don't want to say like tugs at the heartstrings, but there's a lot of that kind of real depth of emotion yeah. in a lot of those previous movies. And I think that's already coming through on this trailer i don't want to kind of jump the gun and be like oh this is gonna be the best movie ever or anything but right. i do get a better vibe from this and and there's not i mean it still has that transformers aesthetic it's got the yeah. it's got that kind of almost sun setting transformers vibe that michael bay would bring to all of his yeah, movies and i'm and, and i mean bumblebee is still he still looks like the Similar to the Bumble, mm. he's still got that very distinctive face with those two round eyes and that weird yeah. kind of metal facial structure. So it's clearly... They've definitely simplified that, though, haven't oh, they? Oh, they did. Yeah, they simplified it, and they simplified kind of his, his body mechanics, too. I mean, the, there was still a ton of moving parts during the transformation process that felt very much like the Michael Bay movies. Mm. But once he was done... You didn't see so much kind of exposed circuitry and stuff. It was yeah. much more covered by panels and things like that. And although interestingly, like later in the trailer, you you see kind of another version of Bumblebee, which who looks similar, but it looks like he was maybe the alt form was a Jeep or something like mm. that. He looks a little bit different. So I don't I don't know where that comes into play. But I, um, I've seen written somewhere Centurion mode, so like almost like oh, his gotcha. um, like warrior. You know, like he's in a battle with Starscream. Yep. So the kind of face plate comes down and the chest changes yep. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, because you need to be you need to be slightly you need to you need to be decked out in your warrior clothes when Starscream <laughs> when Starscream is throwing helicopters at you. Well, that's what I'm assuming. It's amazing what you know some subtle differences will really make. Like Starscream throughout the other movies was just kind of a jet who wasn't necessarily Starscream, but yeah. in this trailer, when you saw 
the gray and you saw the red trim and you saw the familiar shape, I, I immediately went, oh, Starscream. I, yeah. I felt much cooler about Starscream here than I had in any of the previous films just by that small aesthetic change. What a wonderful little addition to that trailer as well. I mean, it just... It, I mean, for one, it shows that we're going to get more than just Bumblebee. I mean, there was yes. talk that it was going to be... Uh, this was like way back in in the day. There was, there was there was talk of it just being about Bumblebee's story with this with this girl hey, who played by Haley Steinfeld, and that was worrying me at first because I thought, well, you know, it's not you know with the Transformers movies, I've always been in the mindset of I want to see Transformers. I don't want to see humans. I don't yes. care about the humans unless unless like they're Josh Duhamel who I actually really like and I loved his character and him and Tyrese and the and the kind of soldiers and all that kind of stuff. I, I did enjoy that that aspect of it. I yeah. didn't really like a lot of the other human interaction in the movie. None of the other humans, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the last... Hamill and Tyrese were about it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I like. I really. I, I vibe on when there's. I suppose when the conflict's happening, and I enjoy it when the Transformers are battling or or on on screen and stuff. But like, yeah, the the designs have always been an issue. Even though that first Transformers mis- um, movie yeah. was incredible. Uh, there was a lot of those initial feelings towards a, f- a live action Transformers movie. So that obviously yep. has to take some credit for how I feel about that first movie. But then as as you say, as it went on, it just got worse and worse. Now, I was always of the th- of the mindset of like, oh, I just didn't want to see more Transformers. I just want to see more Transformers. Mm-hmm. And but watching this, I could accept this because I what for one I feel like there's going to be more emotion attached to it. There's going to be more feeling. Yeah. There's going to probably be a little more emphasis on acting here. Um, right. that, uh, and I, I say that, and then John Cena's in it. No disrespect <laughs> to John Cena because um, you know he's he, he's a he's a star, he's a mega star. But um, I just I feel like you know there's probably going to be a little bit more uh, uh, emotion attached to this one than there has right. been on, in previous ones. And by doing just Bumblebee and this this situation that allows you to do that but the fact they threw Starscream in there and now we're hearing there's going to be more slightly more on both sides Autobots and Decepticons appearing now it could Mm -hmm. be late on in the movie but we don't really know yet we'll probably see more in the the follow-up trailer but yeah that's what I'm looking forward to, you know. Yeah, and, and really, I mean, it's interesting because at the end of the day, all all you want is an enjoyable film. And, and yeah, I watched the Transformers movies because I want to see Autobots and Decepticons fighting it out. But that was kind of the expectation. You know, Michael Bay's the director. It's supposed to be action-packed. I happened to, watch, to stumble upon a clip from The Last Night I think it was after I watched the Bumblebee trailer this evening again, yeah, yeah. it like linked to a clip of Bumblebee versus Sentinel Prime from the last night, which mm-hmm. I had never seen before. And you have like the title of the clip is Bumblebee versus the last night. And it was like all Mark Wahlberg, like running around with a transformer sword, like, mm. you know, call. And you're like, what the, <laughs> you know, I don't want to see Mark Wahlberg yeah. running around with a transformer sword. I want to see the transformers, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. But like you said, this trailer gives a much more kind of charming, much more kind of emotional vibe to it to the point where maybe you don't mind seeing the human characters because you actually don't hate the human characters like you did in the original in a lot of the original Transformers films. They feel like a part of the story. They're not shoehorned in. And yeah. and even in that first Transformers film that I loved, it was still, you know, Sheila Booth who saved the day at the end or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't Optimus, it was the guy, it was the human. And that's been kind of a prevailing theme, which has really been frustrating kind of throughout the whole thing, where the Autobots and Decepticons beat the snot out of each other for, you know, two hours. And then at the end, a uh, human saves the day by some, you know, whatever miraculous object that they managed to get a hold of it's just there's always some sort of MacGuffin isn't there there's always like some sort of but it's always like a mindless thing it's always like I mean the all spark kind of made sense right but but why not and and then like there was a there was a sliver of the all spark and then 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 it was this sword and then it was you know all this other crap and it's just I mean the last night really just hit home to me how much these movies aren't for me you know like i just i kind of like tried to watch it on the numerous occasions it took me maybe three or four goes actually it was age of extinction first took me three or four goes i got about 10 or 15 minutes in and i would just zone out and then just not bother and eventually i forced myself to i forced myself to watch it and it was I, i found myself watching it more to get that like to be angry about it than right. to actually enjoy it and i just thought 
and like and you know take all of the previous stuff i'm not i'm not one of those people that wants to see g1 on the screen exactly you know yeah. I, as much as i enjoyed seeing star scream and again it's not the g1 star scream i mean oh, you look at, no, look at, at that transformation there's still a lot going on but it's it's closer to that to that kind of source material and again I'm, i don't mm-hmm. need i don't need to see that i just need to see I suppose I need to see. I, don't, I suppose I don't know what I want until it's actually on the screen. Do you know what I mean? Until right. someone's actually come up with it, it's the, it's the kind of magic thing. Like you know, you can moan all you like, but you don't. You yeah. can't really put into words or or describe what you actually want to see. I'd love to see some sort of progression, upgrade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, sure. For the Transformers, as long as it didn't look like the previous designs, where yeah. they go through this kind of like weird. I don't know. It's like more. The you know I feel like less is more a lot of the time and in, and in these Definitely. cases thirty to thirty to what was it thirty to eighty thousand moving parts yeah you don't need to, to show 80, us every 000. single individual gear that twists and turns Michael Bay you can you know <laughs> use a little bit of hand waving and a little bit of misdirection to to not I mean we don't need to see the intricate details of Optimus Prime's guts turning inside out so he becomes, you know, a human being from exactly. a truck. I mean. Exactly. And I thought that the transformation from, you know, with Bumblebee into yeah. you know, when and when he's he's kind of a bit scared and he's hiding in the corner. I like that in the 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 initial element of that trailer where uh, you know, she's kind of going up there and saying, you know, who are you? What's your name and all this kind of stuff. Again, he can't talk, which right. you know, again, it ties it into the Bayverse, which is fine. Yeah. Obviously this is obviously I don't think this is. I, I don't think you can call this a soft reboot. I don't think. You, I think it's, no, a, it's a prequel. It's a prequel, more yeah. or less. Prequel, yeah. But I mean, a lot of people have been calling it like a soft reboot, or thought it was going to be a soft reboot. And I'm like, right. well, how can it be? Like, and, it's and totally not. Yeah. It, it can't be. Like, you, but and the other thing is, they can do this. They can go. They can simplify the design, and they can claim that it's just early Transformers right. finding their way. I suppose. Do you know what I mean? Like in in yep. in that in that time frame. And then what you get in the future is this, like, I don't know, let's throw some more cogs and gears and <laughs> stuff <laughs> like that. And I, but I, I really liked, the, in general, the trailer. It, it looks more, way more interesting for me yes. than any of the previous Transformers movies that have just, again, like, just kind of... Uh, every year it gets to the point where I'm... I, don't, I think I saw the... The first one, obviously, saw in the cinema a number of yep. times. The second one, I saw it once in a cinema and then yep. maybe once on DVD thought it was okay the th- the third one again yep. i think i missed it in the cinema i think i didn't bother going uh mm-hmm. the fourth one was the, was the same and, and didn't an age of extinction did not really get hold of it for a long time afterwards right and the last night i avoided right up until the last second yep. when i just thought oh, i suppose i better kind of watch it and i still i've watched it but i haven't really invested my you know the, the commitment of actually putting my eyes and brain yep at that movie so it the, just ugh. i think my breaking point with transformers actually was it was the third film and i happened to be i think in in burlington massachusetts doing some cisco training when it was released oh the thong song <laughs> <laughs> and i had a free yeah. evening and i think i went to some imax theater in boston to watch it yeah and watching a transformers film in imax in 3d is just not healthy I, i'm pretty sure that takes years off your life yeah. and i think after it i just felt mentally and physically like i'd been abused for two hours <laughs> just everything in my face and the music and the, it was just it was a painful experience and i think that was kind of my breaking point where i just said that you know these aren't films this is punishment and, yeah and yeah like you i don't want to go and see you know the you know 1985 film regurgitated over and over again on on the movie screen i don't care if it looks like g1 i just want a decent movie you know i mean yeah so you know and and i think it's you're capable of doing that even with some of these sketchy designs i think you can do some some like i said hand waving some retro fitting so that they look a little bit simpler a little bit less intricate the personalities are dialed back a little bit and and you know that awe you know the the first film I really had the benefit. I saw that in the theater during BotCon 2007, and I was with a nice. bunch of the Boss Fight guys in one of the theaters at BotCon, and that was really the first time I saw it, and that was a fantastic experience. And unfortunately, it was all downhill from there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really kind of feel some of that same energy sort of with the Bumblebee trailer, and I'm hoping that's a sign that maybe Hasbro is awakening to a shift in perspective to how these Transformers characters are viewed and how they can be they can be cool and fun. They don't have to be cool and badass nasty killers. They can be cool and fun and light and and still really 
you know, engage with audiences. You know, I think a film like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy or Black Panther is proof that you can have a multi-billion dollar franchise with characters that you don't necessarily have to take 100% seriously. You can just kind of enjoy them and, and like them and, and, you know, have fun with it. Agreed. Uh, I think with, uh, I think a problem that Transformers has had going forward was that they, they had a good formula in that first movie. Yeah. They, they kind of tried to replicate it too closely in the second and then they exaggerated it after that. So yeah. the you, instead of having the one comic relief in Shia LaBeouf, which is like you know, mm-hmm. and, and maybe his family, like you know, th- there was there was there was co- there was comedic elements throughout, but it was sure. it was contained. When you go to the the rest of the films, you have like five or six comic relief characters, mm-hmm. and it just gets. And I've I've had this conversation with Paddy about the comics. Like yeah. every single character is this is smart funny humor exactly. driven character even magnus <laughs> ultra magnus yep. who should be like dead straight and like on the money but mm-hmm. you know even he's cracking wise so i feel like there's this there's this thing of like this works let's let's have more of it but let's have now let's have everyone like sell, telling jokes and being quirky right. and awkward and it's like no no how to have one of those characters <laughs> exactly there's no impact it's like yeah it's one of the first lessons I ever learned, you know, being an English major back in college was like, if you put an exclamation point next to everything, then they lose all meaning. It's no longer an exclamation point. <laughs> like I do with every post. <laughs> uh, so if, if everybody is a smart ass, then it's no longer, that's just what everybody is. It's yeah. no longer unique. It's no yeah. longer a character trait. So yeah, you've got to choose, you got to choose the right balance between that and not that. I think it works in movies like Guardians of the Galaxy where they're all, th- that group are the ones that yeah. are the you know each one of them riffs off each each other exactly. and then they're around, not all yeah and yeah, then the universe not all around it yeah they're, they're kind of different different of they have kind of. different humor i suppose don't they and that like drax is well drax and mantis have got that like dumb humor where they yeah. they don't really know they're being funny Central and then, yeah. yeah exactly and then you've got gamora who's dead like always straight and then yep. if she says something that isn't necessarily part of what her personality is, that's where the humor comes from. And right. then you've got Chris Pratt who just like, you know, and, and Groot and Rocket. Again, you've got, they've all got this dynamic that works. Yes. Whereas whereas all these random human characters that never come together in the Transformers movie, they're always <laughs> separated elsewhere. Like it just, you know, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I don't have anything against TJ Miller, but I thought him in the, I think it's Age of Extinction. Mm-hmm. I think it's Age of Extinction he's in. I just, I don't know. I just thought it was such a pointless addition, you know. Like, yeah. it, and again, I'm not going to start ripping on Transformers movies anymore. Right. Let's focus on the Bumblebee trailer. Yes. Overall, I'm really happy with it. Yourself, Justin? absolutely. Oh yeah, I'm very happy with it. I was quite impressed, and maybe it's my lower expectations from from previous installments. But but yeah, I was really impressed with what I saw today. And again, like this obviously isn't the movie. We haven't we're not, we haven't seen oh, the film course, yet. Yeah. We've got to wait for that. But I'm I'm actually excited to see this now, and I think this will be the one movie that the one Transformers movie now that gets me back into the cinema yep. to see it. Definitely, I agree. Anyway, so. That's it for this instalment of the Full Force News Burst. Thank you to my wonderful co-host, Justin Bell. See you next time. And as always, Bumble Force. (laughs) The hell is a Bumble Force? I don't know, but it sounds horrible, (laughs) doesn't it? Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. And as always, you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Full Force. And if you would like to contact the show, you can message us on either of these platforms with feedback, questions or to say, who do you think you are? A serious operation now? No, not even close. Look out for more of these news bursts that we are posting on the Facebook page from now on. Full Force.